Welcome to Physio Tips with Mauro. I'm your host, Mauro Burnett. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm a board certified specialist in orthopedic physical therapy and the owner of Australian Physiotherapy Specialist. Okay, today's topic is going to be cervicogenic dizziness or cervicogenic vertigo. In this video, we're going to define cervicogenic dizziness. We're going to talk a little bit about diagnosis and we're going to give you some helpful tips that you can do at home to treat cervicogenic dizziness. All right, buckle up everyone. Let's get into the video and take a look. Let's talk about defining cervicogenic dizziness. Cervicogenic dizziness is a dizziness that's created from an injury of the cervical spine or the neck, especially the top three joints. Any injury to the top three joints of the neck could cause headaches, dizziness, nausea, could even refer pain to your sinus or your jaw. So if you have several of these symptoms, that becomes uh, very characteristic of this disorder. Matter of fact, one study looked at folks that had whiplash injuries, and the second biggest complaint besides neck pain was dizziness. Okay, so how does an injury to the upper neck cause dizziness? The upper neck is rich with nerve receptors called proprioceptors. Proprioceptors send data to the brain on where our body parts are located in space. A great example, the shoulder joint. I can close my eyes, I lift my arm, and I know that's about a 90 degree lift in my arm. I knew that because I sensed where my body part was in space because of my proprioceptive information. In the finger joint, we have 20 proprioceptors per gram of muscle tissue. In the base of the head, we have 200 proprioceptors per gram of muscle tissue. So it plays a big role in our balance system. Oftentimes the balance system can be described as the organs of our ear working properly, vision, that's why we're in a dark room, we feel a little off balance, and thirdly, proprioception. So any damage to either one of those subsystems could lead to disequilibrium or dizziness. Okay, so that's a definition of cervicogenic dizziness. Cervicogenic dizziness diagnosis is somewhat controversial. To date, there's not one perfect medical test that we can do to rule in cervicogenic dizziness. Moreover, there are some in the medical community that believe cervicogenic dizziness or cervical vertigo doesn't exist or rarely exists. However, uh, John Hopkins trained auto neurologist Dr. Timothy Hain in Chicago would argue vehemently that a person that says this doesn't exist has an indefensible case. Um, De Jong is a physician in 1977 and he injected in his upper neck cortisone and anesthetic and what he found was that it induced dizziness and induced imbalance right after receiving that injection into the upper neck. Doctors Ryan and Cope in 1955 did a similar experiment when they injected in the upper neck and that also created dizziness, disequilibrium, and imbalance. There's been several randomized controlled trial research studies since then showing that with proper physical therapy treatment, using special manual therapy, we can not only help these patients in the short run, but help them in the long run. Let's talk about some unique criteria that may help, may help you decide if you're possibly suffering from cervicogenic dizziness. Okay, the first is dizziness that's brought on by aggravating neck postures or maybe a neck injury. You may have dizziness with rotating your neck to the right and you may also find that it's tight when you rotate your neck to the right. You may also find that you have dizziness and pain when you look up. That would be characteristic of cervicogenic dizziness. Cervicogenic dizziness will not accompany hearing loss. There's no connections between the upper cervical spine and the ear. Cervicogenic dizziness um, will also not be that severe spinny sensation that you get from what was considered true vertigo. True vertigo would be a severe, brief, intense spinning sensation, oftentimes it lasts less than a minute. That might be considered more vestibular in uh, nature. Cervicogenic dizziness is often not associated with presyncope or fainting. That could be more cardiovascular disease. If you have obvious signs of headaches, um, nausea, maybe jaw pain, that's classic with upper cervical disorder, that's another clue that if you have those symptoms plus dizziness plus cervical pain, you might be having cervicogenic dizziness and imbalance. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about subjectively what we might see for cervicogenic dizziness, there's a few physical tests that we could do as well. One is a range of motion assessment. We're looking for obvious problems with the neck. Is it tight or sore when you rotate right to left? Or maybe up 
or maybe down, maybe even side to side. If you have obvious neck tightness and neck pain, then you tested positive for that. Another thing that we can look at is palpation of the upper neck. If I can palpate gently in the upper neck and it creates pain, headache, or dizziness, that's also a clue that you may be suffering cervicogenic dizziness. And lastly, we can do a strength test for the neck. If you're lying down on a mat, you tuck your chin, lift your head a little bit, and look to see if it's difficult holding. You should be able to hold it 20 or 30 seconds with a lot of sh without a lot of shakiness. In a previous video that we did on three tests for cervicogenic headache, we defined out that test pretty well. Check it out, and you can get a better description of that test. Those are three physical tests that you can look at, as well as the subjective criteria. So if you tested positive for the physical tests and you tested positive for the subjective tests, you may be looking at cervicogenic dizziness. All right, in the next part of the video, we're gonna give you a few helpful tips on how to treat cervicogenic dizziness at home. All right, let's get into that next part. Let's talk about treatment for cervicogenic dizziness that you can do at home. In 2015, uh, Susan Reed and Darren Rivette put out a randomized controlled trial research study looking at treatments that you could do for cervicogenic dizziness and testing its efficacy. In the study, they looked at a technique called a snag technique that you can use a medium-sized towel to do. So, if you're at home and you want to join in, grab yourself a medium-sized towel and come on back. Okay, in the study, they looked at a sham treatment, a laser uh, treatment that the participants were supposed to do every day. But the laser, although it emitted light and it made noise, it had no internal components, so it was a sham treatment. They compared that to this technique called the snag that they used this medium-sized hand towel for. It was found to have immediate relief with dizziness, sustained relief 12 months later, um, and it's a simple procedure. So I'm going to show you what they did in the study so you can maybe give this a go at home. Okay. Let's talk about the two techniques that were used in the study that decrease cervicogenic dizziness. Okay, we're going to use a small medium-sized hand towel. I'm really interested in the sewn edge of the hand towel called the selvage. I'm going to place the selvage right at the C1 vertebra. That's going to be in line with my earlobes and about the tip of my nose. If I have dizziness rotating to the left, I'm gonna drop the towel on the left, feed it over to my left hand. This one's gonna secure it. I'm gonna put a little pressure on the towel and the towel's gonna to do all the work. I'm gonna take it all the way to the left, as far as I can go without dizziness or pain. If that proved successful, you would do up to three reps on your first day. The next day, you can do up to six reps and you would do that twice a day. Now, let's talk about the case where maybe you have dizziness looking up. We can also use the towel to help there. I'm gonna take the sewn edge or the selvage and place it on the C2 vertebra. If you run your hand on the back of your head, in the upper neck, the very first bump you come to is the C2 vertebra. So I place the towel, gently pull forward, and then I'm gonna go up with the towel as I look up. Okay, if it didn't create dizziness, and didn't create pain, you would do that up to three reps on your first day. And the next day you could do up to six reps and you do that twice a day. If it gives you some relief, if it's successful, try it for a few weeks and see how you respond to it. And there's a couple tips that you could do at home to treat cervicogenic dizziness. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video on cervicogenic dizziness. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future physical therapy related tips. Moreover, if you have a loved one or a friend that suffers dizziness, feel free to share this on social media. Thanks again for tuning in to Physio Tips with Morrow, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.